The idea of turning slime into dirt has been one of these things that I've wanted to try for a long time. Now the reason for that is that slime has a specific heat capacity of 0.2. However, dirt has a specific heat capacity of 1.48. That's a massive increase. That happens at 125 degrees Celsius. So it's very, very possible that we could generate a ton of steam by just heating up slime to the point that it actually turns into dirt. And then we use that dirt to heat up water, which generates a lot of steam. But just how practical is it, and what methods do we need to explore in order to convert slime into dirt in a controlled manner so that it doesn't go absolutely crazy in our base? And the other thing is, can we actually get that huge amount of power increase that it looks like we could potentially get? So let me run you through the series of experiments that I've been doing here, just trying to figure this thing out. All right, so let's see if we can make a dirt power cooker. For starters here, we're just going to have a little bit of insulated tile right up here at the top. Beneath that, I'm going to have the Robo Miner. And just so I know right where the edge of this thing is, just like that, boom, there's the area that it's going to be working in. Okay, so here's the real trick. I'm going to use some weight plates right down here made of gold, and they're just going to go right across like that. Okay, so when we end up with dirt down here, we should see that it will trigger one of these weight plates. Now, I wanna make sure that I can sweep this stuff up. So let's go ahead and just put a auto sweeper right inside of here and then a loader right in the middle. So as we dig this stuff up, there we go. We'll pick that dirt up and we'll throw it inside of there just to move it out of the way. Excellent. Okay, now I want to run a shipping line inside of here that's going to allow me to cook the dirt. So if I create a shipping rail just like this and I heat the weight plates down here, I have seen that the thermal transfer does happen even though they aren't on the same tile. It was a weird oddity that I noticed when working on this video up here, which was the heat conveyor video. So I'll try to make use of it here. All right, so I need some liquid that I'm going to run through here. There we go. How about some petroleum at 476 degrees? It's quite hot. Or something like this, just uh, as an example. Okay, so the thought is I can use something like really hot liquid. In this case, I have a bunch of petroleum. That's going to flow up through here, heating up these weight plates. So this could just be something that's on the way from one spot to another. Because when you convert slime into dirt, it happens at 125 degrees Celsius. So it's really not that hot. So it might be better off for me to actually lower the temperature here, but for right now it's gonna be hot. We'll kind of find the minimum temperature eventually. All right, so for the automation here, I want all of these to be in the exact same condition uh, in order for me to start running some more stuff through it. So I think what I want to do here is send the not signal from all of these so that if, if any of these are true, I actually get the same signal out of it. So you can see how all of these are true right now. And then if we brush one of these down, that one becomes not. And then once we sweep it up, I'm not sure this is going to work so well at a large scale. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and just run this over here real quick. And see. So if I run that to a not, See, that's not going to clear up unless everything is. What I'm worried about is too much building up in one spot and then having this dirt build up really, really tall, which I think is what's going to happen. Okay, so if I sweep some slime in here just like this, then we will see that it's running through just like that. All right, cool. So if I clear the floor, we're good to go. And now let's see what happens when we turn this liquid pump on. All right, what I can see here is that the weight plates are getting very, very hot. We're up to 400 degrees Celsius, just like that. So I can go ahead and turn that off. And what we can see here is that the dirt is building up. Ooh, yeah, look at that. Hey, look at that. Oh, nice. Well, that really took the heat out of there really fast, didn't it? What if I fill this with a vacuum real quick? I wanna make sure that the temperature is actually shifting between here. So we'll turn this one on real quick. What I want to see is that the heat, you know, this is going to get really hot. Oh yes, it is working just as intended. For whatever reason, the thermal conductivity between this weight plate and that rail seems to work, like with the stuff inside the rail, even though they aren't actually touching each other. And it isn't, it isn't really the gas back here. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and um, brush this with a void as if we're in space. All right, so this is all space stuff real quick. What I think we should be able to see is that this is still going to heat up. See that? See, it's still converting to dirt and it's not relying on the gas. 
Ha! Oh, look at that. Oh, that's cool. All right, so that works right there. But what I want to do is I want to build up a decent amount of dirt in this area so that I could possibly do something more with it. Because right now we're just converting slime into dirt, which isn't really that complicated. Nor are we converting that much, right? So what if I just disabled this robo miner for a little bit? Let's see how much builds up in this area. We can see that this one tile of dirt is building up a lot. We're up to 700, 800, 900 kilograms. It should start to expand beyond that one single tile. Hopefully. Yeah, okay, so now it's just building up like crazy. And that's when you want things to turn off. So how do we do that? Because it's once it starts to do this, you really can't keep up with it. All right, first off, let's change the temperature of the liquid here. We're now dealing with stuff that's right around 150 degrees Celsius. So that will be a little bit more realistic. So I'm going to take this automation wire here and I'm going to run it on over to the loader. So this should say that we're going to continue to load so long as not all of these are blocked. And then on the other hand, that's going to say don't dig uh, until all of them are blocked which is probably not going to work, but we'll give it a try. Well, just for starters, this is a good way to get the oxygen out of your polluted oxygen. Ah, but you see the second one thing builds up, it just starts to continue to build up in that one spot. Oh, but maybe, maybe there isn't enough heat. <gasps> yes, this is what I wanted to see. If you keep the temperatures low enough, does it kind of just build wherever it can? Oh, 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 there it goes. Yeah, see now it's building up like crazy. All right, so I, don't think this is going to work in its current arrangement. There's just no way of consistently heating this up from one way, one spot to the other. It's all right, not a big deal. Okay, what if we brush in just a little bit of water? You betcha it turns to steam. <laughs> Maybe that's enough to make it work. Oh no, the water see, the water ends up in contact with the weight plates, which isn't what I want. I only want the water in contact with the dirt. Hmm, well, let's hold on to this idea and try something a little bit different. This time we're going to try to go really, really small. So let's say we run a weight plate right there. That starts to build up dirt, just like this, right? So you, you see the heat right here, that's where it's going to happen. This one teeny tiny spot. And then that is going to take that slime, it's going to run up, and just do this number over and over again. Or maybe what I do here is actually put the conveyor rail to the right. And the reason I'm thinking about doing that is because I would like to have some way of actually getting the energy out of the dirt. So if we do it like this, and then the dirt builds up here, I should be able to use metal tiles to kind of get that heat out. So long as it builds up beyond the bottom spot. So actually I should be able to put this tile right here so that when this is dirt, right? Um, it's actually going to thermally conduct into here, but it won't actually draw away the heat because it's physically only going to be drawing in heat from this weight plate. <laughs> this is some weird stuff. All right, whatever. And then I'll put the robo miner, like, I don't know, maybe back here or something so that it doesn't actually dig up all of this dirt. We should be able to kind of hide it. There we go, right there. I kind of doubt we can run a whole steam turbine off of this thing, but <laughs> we're about to find out. So you can go right here, just like that. I'm only going to put 500 kilograms of water inside of here, so not much. And then I'm going to fill this, obviously with the vacuum. There's not a lot going on inside of here. This is pretty low. So one tile of gold radiant pipe, and we'll just kind of let that do that number right there. And I could just drain the rest of that. We could automate things a little bit more technically if this thing actually shows some promise, but Thermally, what we should, but what I'm hoping to see here is that we start to build up dirt right in this spot. If you take a look at the temperatures. You can see that the weight plate here isn't all that hot. Now it should start to increase. There we go. Weight plates up to 100, 110, just like that. And you can see that we are heating that one tile right above it. Okay, things are not heating up all that fast. Let's get rid of that tile real quick. See if that helps. Oh yeah, there we go. That made a big difference. See, now that conveyor rail is 135 degrees Celsius. Nice. Hmm, so I reversed the direction of the slime. That didn't do anything. All right, so let's try this a little bit different. If I just go like that, then the only spot where it's going to be heated up is right there. All right, so here we go. The slime is on the way in. 
What? That ended up dirt already? Hey, no, I don't want dirt just yet. It's a good sign, though. Okay, let's see here. 114 degrees Celsius. What's going on inside of the shipping rail? Slime at 60 degrees Celsius. Well, the temperature of the slime is increasing. We're up to 80 degrees now. Uh, it's not going quite as fast as I would like it to. Temperature of the liquid goes in at 151 degrees, only comes out at 147, so we're really not getting a lot of heat out of that. Let's try something a little bit more aggressive down there. We'll go with thermium. Okay, so now something is happening. <laughs> well, what's happening here? Oh, all the dirt built up over here. Ah, wrong spot. <laughs> okay. So I guess what that means is that I want to have a metal tile and I want it to be right over here. So we have two heat spots, which is actually going to be a little bit better. There we go. And that's what I'm talking about. Look at all that dirt right there. And then we dig it up. Oh, no. Too much. Too much. No. <laughs> all right. There you go. Ah. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, game. I see how it is. Try this one out. Just put that over here. Like that. Ha! Try to build up now, dirt. Okay, I don't think I need this one. No, 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 no! Oh, no! Okay, so the good news is we are <laughs> certainly making a lot of dirt. The bad news is that we haven't really moved a lot of heat over here to the water. We've got enough in the dirt, but not a lot in the water. So I think what I want to do here is make sure that I'm getting as much heat out of that dirt as possible. So I think that means a temperature shift plate right here, just like that. Oh yeah, now we're bumping the temperature up. An entombed temperature shift plate. That's kind of new. Hey, there we go. Now we got steam. Mmm. Mmm. All right, so now the good question. Can we actually get the steam up to 125 degrees Celsius? All right, let's try this. Hmm? Pretty much laser beam at all. It's not what I wanted. It's still pushing way too much off. To... All right, so let's take a look at the temperatures of what's going on here. The liquid that's flowing in here is at 151. It flows out at 144, so there's not a lot of heat transferring here. However, we are able to convert this slime into dirt, which does give us a big thermal boost. And I'm trying to capture as much of that heat out of here as I can before I then zap it away. So, so far I was able to get this steam up to 125 degrees Celsius. It's not quite above that just yet, so this thing isn't running. Um, or maybe I just need to mop it up a little bit, but it's awfully close. All right, so there we go. The steam turbine is actually starting to run. <laughs> How about that? And now it's too cold again. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Now this makes me think about what I was doing down here again. Uh, and it makes me think that there might be a different way of, of running this sort of system down here where we use temperature shift plates and then we do use kind of an aggressive robo miner just to kind of knock that dirt down. But the idea is that once that dirt converts over from its slime to into dirt form, <laughs> once the slime converts over into dirt, uh, we will capture the energy as fast as we can using the temperature shift plate and then push that very, very quickly into steam. But how do we do something like that? Like, what does that look like? Let's try to build one that's five wide. That way it lines up with a steam turbine. All right, so what I know thus far is that if we run a metal tile through here like this, uh, I'll get dirt from here all the way over here. So that's okay. And the shipping rail is going to go down here like this up, over, and back down. Now the liquid that I'm going to be running through here will just run like this. Okay, that's going to be same sort of crude oil or something or, or you know, something like that. However, immediately above this, I'm going to have some diamond shift plates. Not down here because then it would be in contact with the metal tile. That's not what I want. I want it to be in contact with the dirt, which means directly above that, I'm going to go ahead and throw down some diamond. So this is where I'm going to try to capture the thermal energy and transfer it into water. So just like that, kind of a small thing. Okay, now I need a spot to kind of hide this robo miner. So I think right over here is a good spot, just like that. And then we could put the steam turbine right up there. 
Okay, so here's my next arrangement. I have all of these metal tiles right down here on the bottom. Uh, so this is going to have a shipping rail just like this. Hopefully this will turn into dirt right up here. We're going to dig it up, try to capture that thermal energy as fast as we can, push it straight into steam, maybe run a steam turbine, maybe. Okay, so inside of here, we can see that we have lots and lots of slime that's moving around at 100 degrees Celsius. The liquid that's flowing out is flowing out at 143. It flows in at 151. So again, not a huge amount of transfer, but there's some dirt. <gasps> oh no, I didn't plug that in. Go, go, go. <laughs> see, the problem is that dirt, once it, did that work? Did we get some heat out of that? Yeah, okay, it does work when it kind of flashes over there. <laughs> but then it kind of sits down there on top of it, which I'm not a big fan of. Can we sweep that up? If we put it right there, geez. All right, well, at least this way we could ship it through here. All right, just like so. Bring it up near this thing where that's going to be the coldest and then maybe, I don't know, dump it out over here. Let's try to get the most out of that dirt. This is such a weird thing. All right, what? So the cool thing that's happening here is we are actually bumping that heat up inside of the temperature shift plate. If we watch this slow enough, we will see that this heat, right? This thing's already at 58 degrees Celsius, right? It's only five kilograms worth. So it's matching that temperature shift plate in an instant. And then we sweep it up and it's at what, 60 something. And you can see that it's still 61 right there. And then it goes up into this area where it actually drops down just a little bit. This is where the water drips back in. So by the time that it gets all the way over here to the far left, somewhere in there, it's 57. We're not really gonna be able to get it below 125 or whatever the steam turbine is going to run at, but unless we run like a counterflow system from the liquid out of this, I don't, I don't know, into, into the dirt there, maybe. I just wanna see it work once, possibly. There's actually a lot of temperature shift plates here, so maybe I have too many. Let's just get rid of a couple of those. There we go. <laughs> oh no, dirt found its way all the way up there. That's not good. Here's something you thought you'd never put in a steam room. All right, so just in case, <laughs> this thing will convert it. Oh, oh, well that quickly bumped the temperature up just like that. You know what this makes me think? This makes me think that if we have a metal tile right there, and then insulated tiles on top of it, the dirt should pop out on top of the insulated tiles, which means it could be in the exact same room as the steam. All right, all right, I think I've got a plan that's going to work fantastic now. Well, let's just let this thing run for a little bit before we go and design something else, but I think I found the magic sauce. I suppose you could use the dirt that comes out of this to preheat all of the slime that runs into it. Yeah, that would probably work. So then it takes like no energy at all just to convert it. <laughs> the problem is that the steam turbine runs at 125 degrees Celsius and the conversion from slime to dirt happens like right around 126. So there's, there's just not a huge delta here. It's good for building up large amounts of steam, not good for running steam turbines. Yeah, you see how this pretty much tops out at 124 degrees Celsius? Yeah, I don't think we're going to directly run a steam turbine with that. However, I think we can make the conversion from dirt, from slime to dirt be super efficient. And I think we can harvest a lot of the energy by getting, uh, by converting a lot of water into steam, let's say 100 degrees Celsius, which we might be able to then take and feed to a steam turbine by bumping it up with something else, right? Like the rest of the energy that might be going into the system. So this is going in at 150. Um, so all we need to do is take that heat here and just reroute it through here just like that. And then that would bump the temperature up just that last little bit. So we're multiplying the amount of power we're getting out of it here. Uh, and then we're, we're tipping it over the edge by just flowing it through this spot. So when we do this number, yes, you can see now we've got the steam turbine it's running just fine. The question is, is it self powering? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ish. I mean, we're, we're, we're pumping the liquid in, so I don't, I don't know if it's all that. <laughs> let's try to make a dirt cooker nice and efficient. All right, so this is interesting, but let's go ahead and try to make a nice, efficient dirt cooker. All right, so here's the setup on this one. 
I have slime that's running around just like this, and this is where it's going to be heated. So then I have some gold pipe right back here. I'm going to check the temperature. So long as it's above 130 degrees Celsius, it's just going to be recycled back around and around. If it's below that, then we're just going to eject it here. So we're going to try to get as much heat out of, let's say, the petroleum that's running through here right now and convert the available slime into dirt and then capture that thermal energy here in the form of steam. Uh, maybe up here I could put a pump and I could actually pipe that into a rocket or I don't know whatever else I wanted to do with it. So we can see right here, we're still, what, 115 degrees. So we have to run a little bit through there. 128, 129. Eventually we should see that that circulates back around, 130. Now, it would help if I plugged it all in. All right, there we go. All right, so we can see that the metal tiles here are increasing in temperature. There we go, it's converting into dirt. Excellent. We see the water right now is at 15 degrees Celsius. And what I want to do is go ahead and uh, load this back into a conveyor and we're going to ship that counterflow wise back this direction. Although it looks like uh, looks like my shipping rail is already kind of doing that for me. Hold up, let me not do that. Those need to be insulated. All right, so we can see that the temperature of the stuff that's flowing in and the stuff that's flowing out is what? Mm, well, it's actually quite a bit cooler because it's still cold over here from the left side. It'll be interesting to see how that changes as this runs a little bit. Each one of these is a diamond shift plate back there. Let's try to measure the amount of slime I'm going to put in here real quick. Okay, so what I'd like to get a measurement of is just how much thermal energy I'm actually getting out of this dirt. So I've put one ton of slime in up here and you can see the temperatures over here. We're going to try to kind of even all of that out. We'll kind of see just how much it changes. Mm, you see, that's kind of the thing. I tell you what, it's not too consistent with these diamond shift. Okay, I now have 2,400 kilograms of diamond and 500 kilograms of water. Its initial temperature is 70.6 degrees Celsius. So now I'm going to run one kilogram of slime through the system here and see just how uh, much of an increase we get. Bam, look at that go. Okay, so now the temperature is 83.3. Interesting. All right, so that was interesting, but let me go ahead and reset all of this to about 20 degrees Celsius, um, and we'll try the test again. This way I'll be able to measure the increase in temperature up here, and I'll also be able to measure just how much liquid I get out, and I'll know what the difference of my input temperature is to the output temperature to kind of get a uh, comparison to see just how much actual energy we are getting out of this conversion. Now the preheating and pre-cooling thing, I don't know about all that. That's just kind of crazy, <laughs> um, but it is what it is. Okay, so everything's going to be at the exact same temperature, 20 degrees Celsius for the slime, the water will be 20, and the temperature shift plates, they come in at 20 degrees. So that's 293. Okay, so just like that, everything's at 20 degrees Celsius. All I have to do is dig that. There we go, it's actually being loaded right now. You can see that we're pumping quite a bit of liquid through this but we did convert a fair amount. Ha! Okay, so that was 1,100 kilograms of petroleum. It went from 151 down to 142.3. The amount of dirt I got out of the thing was 258 kilograms, which is not a lot, all things considered. However, that temperature of the water went up from 20 to 58. Let me just run that again. For good measure. All right, so after crunching some of these numbers here, we came up with some interesting results. All right, so after running the numbers here, we had a massive increase in the amount of energy down here. So our diamond and water all together was about 3 billion DTUs, and that increased to 3.4 billion. So we had an increase of 386 million DTUs. Uh, we used 19 million DTUs, or megadutes, uh, in order to cause that reaction. Now, some of that ended up in the dirt on the way out. So about 49 megadutes is accounted for right there. There's still a gap though uh, in the amount of energy that we have versus the energy that we're getting out. I can only account for 454 of my potential 589. 
So some of it's going somewhere, and some of that is just being straight up deleted, I think, because the mass out is relatively low. Because ultimately we brought in 1,000 kilograms worth of slime, and we ended up with 228 kilograms worth of dirt. However, some of that energy was transferred and captured before the mass was lost. So that's why we have a bigger number here, smaller number there, and a mysterious <laughs> somewhere else. So while the numbers are not 100% clear or definitive, what we can see here is that the difference between the amount of energy that we used up versus the energy that we captured is absolutely massive. That's a 20 times difference right there. 2,000%. Now the thing is, can we actually turn that into an effective power system? Hmm, that's where things get a little bit more difficult. So here's what's up. Our steam turbine really wants to run at 200 degrees Celsius in order to put out its maximum amount of power. However, we really can't generate temperatures over 125. Matter of fact, the closer we get to that number, I think the less effective our system becomes because the dirt on the way out is going to be relatively hot. So we capture less up here and more of it ends up down here. And well, actually more of it just gets deleted too. Yeah, anyhow. Let's not let that deter us. Let's go ahead and try to build this thing up to the point where it might actually work. <laughs> Maybe. Okay, so I think the first thing I need to do here is adjust the input temperature to this thing. I wanna make sure that I'm above 200 degrees Celsius because being at 152, I'm never ever going to get anything hot enough to really run that steam turbine um, near its maximum. So I need to change out the liquid that I'm using. All right, so that's a bunch of petroleum at 225 degrees Celsius, the temperature you might potentially see out of a crude oil boiler that isn't running 100% efficient, right? So maybe we're actually intentionally trying to keep that petroleum hot. Now look, I'm not saying this is practical at all. It's, it's ridiculous. I just wanna see if it works. <laughs> okay, so I want to make this long, like really, really long. Uh, the reason is because I want to have the highest temperatures up here, the coldest temperatures down below. So you make it taller, you can create the, a larger gradient. Well, I'm gonna stick it way up here. All right, we're gonna build a giant counterflow system here. That'll be cool. So what I'm going to do is bring in this rail, just like this, over here. That's where the slime is coming in. And it's going to heat up all the way down here. Okay, now the dirt on the way out is going to go back like this, right? So that is dirt out over here, somewhere. Okay, now this petroleum is still going to be hot. I'm going to set its temperature out um, whenever that temperature is below 200 degrees Celsius. So once we get just below 200 degrees Celsius, we're going to dump that liquid over here, and then we're going to run it through a big snake thing all the way up to the top. So this is going to be our radiator. Boom, just like this. Now maybe this is way bigger than it needs to be, but well, it is what it is for right now. All right, so there's the big radiator. We'll just jump over that a few times, just like this. There's the petroleum that's going to flow through here and heat all of this up. And we go back to insulated. Hopefully it's not too hot by, by the time it's up there. Oh, you know what? That should be running the other direction. That should be running from up here down. The reason we want to do that is because we want the highest temperatures at the top. Okay, don't judge me for my crazy pipes. <laughs> Okay, so hopefully 200 degrees will go up here and hopefully it's down to 125 or so, actually below that, by the time it gets down here. And then the dirt is also shipping that same way and we'll see what happens here. There's a good chance this slime might get too hot over here and actually just turn it into dirt right up there. Just clear out all of this, boom, thank you. Will this thing be self-powering? Maybe, I mean, we're bringing it, we do have this going in at 200 some degrees, so that's, uh, there's a good chance of it. Let's just go ahead and disconnect all the rest of this craziness. Okay, I just gotta cut that wire. And then when I'm ready, I'll just cut this wire and then this thing will be on its own. Whew. All right, so here we go. Ooh, that's a lot of dirt. You know what I forgot? <laughs> I forgot the diggers. There we go, four of them. Okay, the top ones actually cannot reach all the way down here, but they can uncover those just in case. Okay, so we have a lot of dirt that's converting right over here in this spot. Oh, there goes a lot of steam. Here's what I'm going to do. I am going to stagger this digger just a little bit. So rather than being right there, it's gonna be right there. Or maybe I'd move it up just a little bit more. I kind of want these things to aim at different chunks of dirt if possible. 
and preferably not over my liquid vent. <laughs> Here's my answer to that one. More vents. Okay, so how are we doing temperature-wise? We can see that we are down to 114 down there. We get all the way up towards 180 something right there. Right down here on the bottom, we're at 98 degrees, 62 right up there. If I snip this just for a moment, we'll kind of see the amount of petroleum making its way out and its general temperature, 81 degrees, not bad. And you can see that the amount of petroleum is not increasing all that fast. We're talking 184 degrees. And then every once in a while, some petroleum will make its way through. Although the amount of slime that's moving its way in cannot be ignored. It's a lot of slime. <laughs> I mean, if you really don't like your slime, this is the thing for you, but... <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's generating a good amount of power. Let's go ahead and see if it is self-powering. Okay, so I've disconnected that. Now it's running all on its own. I think one thing I, uh, another thing I might want to do here is quickly just snip this little bit right there. And what I'm going to do is run a conveyor shutoff. That way we don't just keep pumping in more and more slime if we don't need to. So we can take this automation wire we could say, let's only turn it on once our batteries go down to 60%. Okay, well, now I need a load because nothing is running. Okay, let's try 300 watts of light bulbs. There you go. Now you're running. This thing should be shipping if it had power. Mmm, 300's pretty close to its maximum amount. The battery is actually not really changing that much. Uh, if we do 250 watts. Nope, 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 nope. How about 200? There we go. We can maintain 200 watts on this thing. What's interesting is just how consistently it's building up in this one spot. Uh-oh. Guess we can't maintain that much. Oh, buddy, that goes bad quickly. <laughs> uh, snip that down, too. Oh, this thing's too hot. Man, I put all this oxalate over there. Fine, we'll do some more. We really are not shipping any dirt out. That's the crazy thing. Something's going on here. This is... Can't you build up in a different spot? No. <laughs> you just, you only want to have and do it right here, huh? Here, let's get rid of this one tile. <sighs> See, there we go. Now it's building up over here and it's doing something a little bit different. Okay, good deal. I ran out of slime. The mystery here with this whole thing here is, is that the dirt vanishes, but yet some of the power remains. I, like it's hard to even understand what's happening here. But yes, it is generating power. <laughs> like a fair amount of it, too. All right, so I'm going to let it run this entire cycle, try to get some sort of idea of just how much power it's actually generating throughout a single cycle. And because this number, that amount of watts that it puts out, actually goes up and down depending on whether or not some petroleum decides to cycle through it. Okay, so the results are in, and they're interesting. I'm not even sure what to make of them. <laughs> but the steam turbine over here generates a little extra power as compared to the amount of power it consumes. Not a whole lot, though. We're talking about 250 kilojoules, or right around there. It spikes up every time we get the petroleum to run through there, and then it kind of drops off as it cools off. So it really kind of just depends on what's cycling through there. That runs right around 150 degrees Celsius. The thing is that the output temperature of the petroleum is relatively cool. We're talking about 85 degrees Celsius. The same goes for the dirt, right around the same temperature. Not a lot cooler than what we were testing with before, though. So this extra length here hasn't made a big difference. As far as the amount of thermal energy we're running through right here, we're talking about 316 million DTUs that we're extracting from the petroleum. Now, maybe this whole process should work in a different way in that we run through here, and then once we get down there, we kind of recirculate it. I don't know, maybe. But the one major number that kind of stands out here is the fact that it runs through right around five and a half tons of slime per cycle. <laughs> Ultimately, what I've found here is that it's not very efficient to kind of run this with the idea that it's going to heat up steam or this water that's coming back in here at right around 90 degrees Celsius. If we're trying to use a dirt cooker to heat things up, it's best to submerge it or expose it to something very, very cold because that dirt only exists for a very short amount of time. So therefore that transfer has to happen very quickly. So it was really, really efficient in heating up cold water. However, once we get near 125 degrees Celsius, or in this case, 110 or so, 
the amount of transfer that's happening between these two is not very efficient. Which brings us to the next point here. Well, is it effective for heating up liquids? Well, in my first test that I did there, it was running at around seven and a half million DTUs per second. Now, when you compare that to the liquid tepidizer, which runs at about four million DTUs per second, okay, that's a little bit more. However, a liquid tepidizer is pretty simple. You just dip it in some water and feed it some power. <laughs> so I'm not 100% sure this thing is has any real practical use. Unless you just don't like your slime and you want to turn it into dirt, then here you have a method to potentially do that. But nevertheless, it's an interesting experiment, and maybe somebody out there can find a good use for it. So if you have some ideas for me, go ahead and leave them down there in the comment section below. And if you come up with something, maybe share it on the, on the Discord channel. At any rate, that's all I got time for today. If this looks like the channel for you, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button. Stay awesome, guys. Peace. Brothgar, out.